start with a troubling statistic. According to the World Economic Forum, women account for only 25% of this time workforce. And in AI, the number is even smaller. Not only is this a problem for women's careers, but also for the evolution of technology and its impact on society. Algorithms, well, machine learning, and artificial intelligence have grown exponentially in the past few years and are widely implemented in the latest consumer technologies. They have the power to transform our lives and solve tremendous problems, both personal and global, from ameliorating environmental damage to mapping ocean floors to automating household chores. And this is great, right? In many ways, yes, but today I would like to analyze what the implications are when the creators of these technologies, which have the power to transform our lives, are primarily men. Contrary to popular belief, machines aren't inherently unbiased. Sure, they don't feel emotions like we do, but they learn from their creators, just like children learn from their parents and teachers. Just like racism can be taught to a child, and also sexism, bias can be taught to a machine. Let's look at one example. In 2014, Amazon developed an algorithm to rate its job applicants and streamline the hiring process. According to Reuters, the algorithm rated applicants on a scale from one to five stars. And rather than, say, vetting 100 applicants, Amazon's hiring team could focus on the top five. Yet no matter how useful this tool might sound, there is a catch. Algorithms like this one learn by looking at data sets, finding patterns among them, and using those patterns to predict future outcomes. In this case, Amazon's algorithm looked at resumes received over a decade, found the qualities of the candidates ultimately hired, and screened new candidates based on those qualities. And the problem here is that the candidates hired over those 10 years were disproportionately men as was the case with many other tech companies of the time, likely due to a combination of more male applicants and gender discrimination. What Amazon's algorithm learned is that being male was one characteristic of the ideal candidate, and it even penalized female candidates with female-specific language in their resumes, like head of the women's chess club. To compound the problem by systematically pushing male candidates to the top, in eliminating even qualified females from consideration, the algorithm accelerated its own bias because algorithms continue to learn and get smarter from their own decisions. Not only was this a setback for women's careers, but it was also a disadvantage for Amazon. In 2017, the consulting firm McKinsey studied 366 companies in various industries throughout the world and found that the most diverse workforces outperformed national industry medians. And this is just one of many studies showing that teams with more ethnic and gender diversity produce more robust innovations and perform better financially. Algorithms and all other forms of AI can have the same influence as human leaders. And if we limit the perspectives developing them and allow our biases to infuse in them, we are putting our people at risk. As we continue to develop technologies, it is our collective responsibility to ensure that they are fully vetted from all stakeholder groups before implementing them into society. And the compound word here is group. Research has shown that being the single anything in a team, token female, African American, Latino, low income student, or LGBTQ member does not provide sufficient diversity support or infrastructure to lead to significant contribution. Tokenism is not the answer to the problem inherent in homogenous groups. I recently spoke with Iris Bonin, a Harvard professor and author of What Works? Gender Equality by Design. And she stated that a certain mass of representation needs to be achieved in order for cognitive diversity to improve our collective intelligence. In other words, we don't just need women on STEM teams as lone representatives of the female gender. We need lots of women on lots of teams, and we need them to lead. I mentioned earlier that women account for only 25% of the STEM workforce, and that number drops dramatically to 9% when talking about STEM leaders. I'll say that one more time. 
less than one in 10 leaders in STEM are women. And why is that? Is it because we lack interest or leadership skills? Or is it because there are deeply entrenched obstacles in society that limit our success? Let's look at one relevant example. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, women applying for the National Institute of Health funding grants typically receive $41,000 less than their male counterparts. This is significant because this such funding is a major factor in getting projects off the ground and ultimately to success in the field. The study found that there are biases that favor male candidates in pay, hiring, speaking invitations, and prize money. This leads to women having to work harder and with less money to reach the same level as men. But it wasn't always this way. History is full of examples of women revolutionizing every STEM field. I recently read The Secret History of Women in Coding in the New York Times and learned that the very first person to do what we call coding was a young mathematician, Lady Ada Lovelace, and she wrote the first computer program 200 years ago. Fast forward to the 1940s, when computers were becoming a practical reality. The original coders were primarily all female teams, and one of these groups wrote the code for the first programmable digital computer, the ENIAC. And in, they also developed key coding concepts like debugging and breakpoints, which allow you to stop a program midway through its run to find bugs more easily. And in 1951, Grace Hopper developed the first compiler, a program that translates English language into computer language. And in the 60s, Mary Allen Welks wrote the software allowing a user to interact in real time with the link, one of the world's first interactive personal computers. Now, if any of you knew this, please raise your hand. So none of you have your hand up, and this is not surprising, because in all of these instances, women received little or no credit for their work. And as people started to see the power and profitability of software in the 1980s, men whose influence still reigned replaced women in these roles, and women's presence in the field fell sharply. Then, the history of the foundational role that women with outstanding analytical abilities played in their contribution to this field has been lost to our generation. Yet without their contributions, we would not live in the same world we do today. I hope you now see, if you didn't before, that women have a significant role to play in STEM, and that they too have the abilities to make revolutionary discoveries. As we move further into the 21st century, what can we do today, tomorrow, next week, in a year, or even a decade to ensure that we develop ethically motivated technologies that will benefit and empower us all? In a perfect world, we would snap our fingers and all of the barriers that exist to women would disappear. But as with all efforts to change a long-standing status quo in a complex system, not all answers are visible or simple. I could start by giving anecdotes of women making groundbreaking discoveries in teams, but that would diminish my greater point. After all, a female dominant team could produce an equally ineffective system with equally problematic issues. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki recently stated, tech is an incredible force that will impact our world in ways we can't predict. If that force is only 20 to 30% women, we have a problem. So if I may propose a call to action today is that we all recognize that having women in all forms of diversity involved in these technological innovations that will help us reach an ethically just future that will contribute to social good and more robust innovations. Diversity in all its forms is what leads to the best results, the best us. Just imagine what together we can accomplish. Thank you.